Howdy everybody, uh, John Coffee here. Uh, it's been a long time since I've uh, done a video. I feel like I repeat myself saying that all the time because I just don't I don't get around to doing a video very often. But I figured I'd come on here and uh, do a review of a movie I just got done watching. It's a, a trauma film, which I know when I hear trauma I always think of goofy horror comedies like Toxic Avenger, which I love that stuff, but when Trauma puts out a serious film, they always put out something awesome, like Combat Shock, and this one is Story of a Junkie, which stars uh, John Spacely, which uh, I knew John Spacely from a film about Johnny Thunders, who's the ex-guitar player for the New York Dolls, and we go on to have a pretty big career in the Heartbreakers, not Tom Payton's Heartbreakers, but his version of Heartbreakers. Uh, Johnny Thunders was a... Uh, one of my favorite musicians, so I always searched. Out, I've been searching this film called Born to Lose. I finally found a copy of it. and I watched it, and uh, him and a guy called John Spacely didn't get along. And uh, I found a. I was looking for this movie, Story of a Junkie, for a long time, just because it was another look at this lifestyle, the '80s. I don't want to say punk, because I don't really consider Johnny Thunders punk, but that New York rock heroin scene, and I actually found it on Blockbuster Online, and so I rented it. And the movie basically just follows John Spacely and a couple other addicts along their journey through their addiction. And, uh, I can't remember the director's name, but he did a great job with this movie. This is one of those things where I completely detest drug, ad drug addiction and the whole scene, but it absolutely fascinates me at the same time. And if you're like me and you love documentaries about taboo kinds of stuff, this movie is just amazing. Space Lee is a very sympathetic person because he seemingly, you know, he keeps talking about how much he wants to get out of New York and get his life straight up, but he just can't. And uh, the, the thing that's most the movie becomes most notorious for is the fact that. All the scenes of people shooting up are absolutely real. And it's really disturbing to watch. They got tracks all on the arms. There's a scene where, like, you know, Spacely keeps sticking this vein over and over trying to get it in there right. There's a scene where, like, I, I think you're supposed to think he does too much. That's the one thing about this movie that I was going to get to that I'm not a big fan of. Is the fact, like, it is for the most part a documentary. It just follows these good people. There's a couple other people too where they go to like shoot up houses where they'd all get together and shoot up and but there's certain scenes where like Spacely gets robbed and that stuff is you know fabricated but the movie for the most part is 100% legit and it's a great look into this time period I think they said they filmed it in 84 but it didn't get released until 87 uh, the sad thing about it is, is that John Spacely would actually later on in his life go to be get completely clean to the point where, like he didn't even drink coffee because it had caffeine in it. He was 100% clean, and he would eventually find out he had AIDS from shooting up with a dirty needle, and he would die. And that footage of him in his last days is actually in Born to Lose, the last rock and roll film, the Johnny Thunder documentary, which I highly recommend it too. And uh, it, you actually see Spacely in the hospital. And he's talking about Thunders, and how much he didn't like Johnny Thunders. And you actually see his body after he dies, which is real sad. Especially now I have seen this movie, and seen that basically really, like, Born to Lose, he kind of gets a put off as the bad guy, because in that movie, Thunders is the basis. But in this one, you really see that he's not a bad guy. He's just an addict, you know. Uh, there's so many good scenes in this movie. I know some people could consider it's could be boring because there's not a whole lot of stuff that happens. Like there's a lot of scenes of just them walking to the city, but I love that kind of stuff because you really get to see the city. But the scene that sticks out to me the most, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but there's a scene in this movie where Spacely is talking about his ex-wife and uh, a situation that happened with them. And all I'll say about it is uh, aborted fetus. Not making it up, it's absolutely shocking when he talks about this. But, 
And the movie is just great. It's disturbing, it's shocking. I mean, you really, like, if you wanted to show somebody what that era of drug addiction was like, this is the film to watch. It captures it absolutely perfect. I can't think of a movie that does a better job of really showing just how bad things were in that scene. And it doesn't glorify it at all, but at the same time, it's not preaching to you and saying, don't do drugs, don't do drugs, it's bad. All it does is just turn the camera on, point at these people, and show you what it was like. And I absolutely love this movie. But the special features, are, it's like every trauma film. You'll have one or two that are really good about the movie, and then you'll kind of... You know, they start shilling their stuff a little too much. It's what they do. This is before the Trollmaster piece stuff. Those are a little better than these DVDs. This is kind of on the same lines like the Bloodsucker Freaks DVD where it doesn't have anything at all about the movie on it. This one has a interview with the producer and a commentary with the director. And the rest of the features are throwaway. The transfer was absolutely horrible, but again, that's kind of what you come to expect from Trauma. But all that stuff don't bother me. To buy this DVD, if you can still find it, I don't know. I looked everywhere for it and couldn't find it cheap. And by cheap, I mean under like $30. <laughs> but I could have just been looking at the wrong places. I don't know if it's in print or not. You might be able to get it off the trauma site for cheaper. I haven't looked there. But I rented it off Blockbuster Online. So if you have Blockbuster Online, you definitely can get it. And I absolutely recommend buying this movie if you can get a copy of it. As soon as I find a cheap copy of it, I will be getting it myself. And, uh, the one complaint, like, I have, other than, than, uh, the whole, some of the fabricated scenes, is the music is a little weird for this film. They actually use that song, that like, don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. And I was like, that's an odd choice of music. But, you know, it's a pretty shocking film, like I said. If you're kind of weak... When it comes to watching stuff about drug addiction, like say if train spotting bothered you, <laughs> or something like that, you're definitely not gonna watch this because this is real. And it's like as soon as you see like basically them shoot for the first time, it's just oh, an uber surreal moment. Because it's not this is not like Easy Rider where they smoke weed. This is hard, hard stuff. But like I said, if you're into that air, like if you're into the Johnny Thunders. The New York Dolls, uh, bands of that era, and that scene in New York where they were all heroin addicts <laughs> and drug addicts. I highly, highly recommend Story of a Junkie. I don't think you're going to get any better than that. The only one that comes even close to that, and it's not the same because it's just about Johnny Thunder's life, is Born to Lose. That's even harder to find the Story of the Junkie. But, uh,. I'm going to try to get around to doing some more videos. I seem to slack off quite a bit. But uh, that's all i got to say for now, guys. And keep checking back. I might do some more reviews. So uh, I'll see you all later.